What's up guys, Marco here and in today's video I want to share four strategies and tips with you in order to succeed with influencer marketing and make sales. Because it seems that lately there was a lot of fluff going on like influencer marketing doesn't work anymore, you should stay away from it, it's bad and all these kind of things. In fact, we have been using influencer marketing since 2015 and it has always been super successful but you have to do it the right way. So in this video, I want to share the strategies that we use and it always work for us. So stick with me and I hope that you can transfer them to your business as well. All right, guys, so let's get started. And the first mistake that you should avoid by all means is um, using these branded or these normal community style brand websites. So what do I mean with this? Well, it's probably something that you're fam familiar with Let's say you sell some cat products, which I see a lot, people selling pet products and they then go for these type of sites. Now this is, like I said, this may be the strategy that you are very, very familiar with and probably you don't make this mistake, but I see still a lot of people doing it. So you have this page here and you want to advertise because it's about cats, right? And you sell cat products, whatever it is. But the, in fact, first of all, the followers of these pages don't have cats by themselves. I mean, some of them of course do. But why do people follow these pages? Well, because they think the, these cats are cute, because they're cool, because they like the pictures, it's funny, whatever. So this is not your target audience. Just because someone li likes the cats page um, is very far from this person actually having a cat. And, and you know, it, it doesn't really make sense. The second thing, and this is even more important, these pages do not have influence. So when we talk about influencer marketing, we want people who have the trust of their audience to sell our products. But a page called Cats of Instagram is definitely not an influencer by definition, simply because you know they, they share funny pictures and people might like it and it's cute and funny. But when it comes to buying something, they probably do not really listen to the page that much because they don't have this connection like with an influencer that they follow and know about their lives and everything and they heard them speak and talk. So Cats of Instagram is a is a really big page obviously. If you can get on there for 50 bucks or something, sure, I would do it. But if you pay the real price, which is of course way, way, way higher, then it doesn't make sense anymore. And this is always the case with these uh, community style topic based pages if they offer you an amazing deal you might try it but for the normal rates it's definitely you shouldn't even consider it um and let's move on with my other examples and for that we want to check for an actual account and i want to stick with my always famous yoga example that we kind of use in every video i have no idea why i think it's maybe some secret desire that i have or something i have no idea but let's check with these yoga sites and um yeah, for example, the first one here, right? So here we have a girl, apparently, um, a girl that is all about yoga, or at least, yeah, okay, it seems to be all about yoga. And we see already that people who follow her, uh, besides to some men, besides some men probably that follow her for different reasons, but uh, a lot of their follow of her followers might be girls into yoga, into fitness, and these kind of things. So these are, first of all, a very good target group. But the second thing is that she actually should have a connection with her audience. So these people are probably talking directly to her and you know they they they, they know her, they know her poses, they know what she do what she's doing, they know her face, they know when she's talking. She, they, they see her lying like flat on the bed right here. Um, they have videos. So they really have the connection. So she has way less followers, but they are first of all very targeted. And second of all, she built a personal um, connection. Now, what you could do even more than that, instead of using someone with 60,000 um, subscribers, you could go even less to the so-called micro-influencers. And these micro-influencers by definition have less than 10,000 followers. And they usually have the highest um, the highest rates of engagement. So if you have someone with 8,000 subscribers or 10,000 subscribers, many people miss on these smaller influencers. But in fact, if you get one that has 10,000 subscribers and a very good engagement rate, like probably 2,000 likes on every picture, 3,000, 1,500, a lot of comments, and it's very, very specifically in your niche, you should absolutely try it. So the first thing here is that these small influencers usually have still very low rates if you're lucky. Of course, there are some that have like 8,000 and it's, they still demand $400 or something ridiculous like that. But if they are realistic, you can actually get, uh, get featured on there for a very low price. And what you could also try is you could try to get them in 
just by sending them a product. And the good thing is that especially if you have a niche store, again, if you have a general store, it's harder. But if you have a niche store, let's say I have a niche store about yoga and I want to send her a very good yoga mat and I say, hey, this yoga mat, uh, I sell it for $40 or $50. So to her, the whole perceived value is higher because she doesn't see the purchase costs, right? So she doesn't know, or at least she doesn't immediately see that the product in reality costs five or 10 or 15 or $20. So because she only sees the sales price, she might think, well, I don't, I need a yoga mat anyway. Um, so why don't just get it, get it from them? You know, I basically get 40 or $50 for free. Probably she here wouldn't do it because she's too big. But if you have a micro influencer, um, you can easily get some of them just by sending them a free product, which is great because it doesn't cost you anything, basically, like just a few dollars. So this is another thing. If you work with micro influencers, first of all, they are targeted. They have a very engaged audience and um, you can sometimes get away with just sending them a product. But also what is very important for influencer marketing in general is that when it comes to the actual advertising, many people make the big mistake of just saying, hey, here's the product, please make a post uh, for three hours and that's it. But if you do it like this, like I said, you can just do banner ads. If you just have a picture with nothing on it, um, people, first of all, it gets way, way less engagement. So let's say, you know, her videos here get like 2000 likes or her, her posts get 2000 likes. 60, 100 comments, 25, 80. If she now just posts a random picture of your yoga mat without anything, just like buy now, she would probably get what would what, what she get? Like 150 likes and 10 comments or something. So you know immediately if you just sent her a picture, hey, please upload this and that's it, this won't work. So instead, if I look at these top three pictures that uh, seem to get quite a lot of engagement, why not ask her to take a picture on your product in this case? So you could send her the yoga mat, she uses it, people get interested because it's a normal picture, not just an ad, so they look into it and they see the, uh, her doing whatever uh, pose this year might be, but she's, uh, people see her doing it and they are not just, they're not like scared away from, from an ad because they, they can't tell that this is an ad yet. And only when they look into the picture and they see the copy and they see everything, then she can talk about like, hey, I got this new yoga mat from whatever yoga store you have. Uh, it's super comfy or whatever <laughs> yoga mat should be, right? It has good grip or whatever. So um, she can talk about the benefits and she can talk about the product. But first, it has to look like a normal, natural picture, a picture that your influencer would do otherwise too, and not just because it's an ad. And that way you get people in, you get people interested, people can see your product in action, which is normally cooler than just, just a, a picture from a photo studio, which doesn't really help. And um, like I said, you get way more engagement on these kind of pictures. Also, if you do one of those simple product placements without anything, like without her face and without any stuff, these pictures normally always stay for a few hours only because obviously they don't want to have these pictures on their feed. So with these pictures, you can always just get a few quick shout out and you hope that the right people are online and the right people click. But if you really uh, make a cooperation with, with something like, like you can see right here, and this is already quite product placement style, but, but especially with th things like the yoga mat that I just uh, told you about, um, she might really keep it in her feet and that way you can use it in your store. You can use it as imagery for all kind of marketing material. Um, more and more people may see it over time. Of course, um, the, the newest pictures always get the most engagement, but also the older ones get some clicks here and there. And especially if she grows bigger at some point and probably some people check their older pages, uh, their older, uh, older posts as well these people might stumble upon your product. So it has a lot of benefits if you just put it right into the post and if you don't just try to make a one uh, simple photo post and that's it. This is something that you should absolutely keep in mind that is very important if you wanna be um, successful with influencer marketing. And the last tip that I can give you is if you wanna align your interest with, and <laughs> I can't click it away, so you have to look at her face for the rest of the video now, but I think that's okay. So uh, the last thing that I can tell you that is very important is if you have a small scale influencer, chances are that you will get this influencer to work with you on a commission base. So if you have a large one, like 300,000, probably they only want to see cash, cash, cash and nothing else. But you have a small one 
and probably also up to let's say 50,000 or maybe even 100 if you offer them some fixed component but also um, a, a variable one they might agree on this so you might say hey I give you a hundred dollars for for this post and you get five percent of any gross sales that you make through the link in the bio or whatever or, or people that use your discount code and things like that so that way you get your in both interests aligned she really um, has to make like a better picture and not just post some random stuff so she might really think about the actual picture even more um, and of course it's just better because you have a little less risk that it doesn't work because if you make some of the payment commission based of course you only you still have this little payment on the side but it's less than you than you would have to pay if it's everything fixed and especially if you're a small store at this point this can really help you not spend too much upfront so this is why this is really helpful um, not many influencers will agree on that at least not without a very big fixed payment as well but there are some that maybe even do commission only but some that only do a few uh, short small fixed payment and a commission on top so this is um, something that should absolutely consider to do as well so guys these were my tips on influencer marketing um, of course there are so many more details so many more things that we tried that that work for us and whatever but in this video i just wanted to talk about this one thing um, i hope that you liked it i hope that this is something that helps you if it did please leave a like and please subscribe if you have any questions or if you have a different style of approaching influencers post it in the comments uh, if you want to see more of that of course you can also put it in the comment as well like i said please subscribe and I will see you in the next video.